Good afternoon and welcome once again to WebFG TV. With us today is Boris Schlossberg. He's managing partner at BK Asset Management. Boris, thank you very much for your time. Great to be with you. Okay, three or four weeks ago, before the last non-farm payrolls in, in the U.S., right. people were still speculating about whether the U.S. economy might weaken over the summer or right. whether it would strengthen. You had Barclays talking about moderate growth, Goldman Sachs talking about an acceleration. The last non-farm payrolls number comes out and all of a sudden everybody turns optimistic. Right. Do you believe that's justified or not? I think it's steady as she goes. I think okay. we're sort of at a 200,000 rate. We finally recovered all the job losses that we've had since the, you know, the Great Recession of 2007. Um, and the U.S. economy just has its own internal momentum. It's not super fast, but it's just, I think, good enough to, for the Fed to consider the possibility of exiting QE and raising rates in 2015, next year. They're going to really want to make sure that this is sustainable. So, so far, I think all signs point to yes, it being sustainable at this point. Okay. Do you see any risks at all, significant risks at all, that the Fed might bring forward the schedule for starting to roll, rather for the first interest rate hike next year, bring it just a little bit forward? No. I, I, I doubt that the Fed is going to sort of move their time schedule to the Q1 of 2015, mainly right. because there's quite a lot of geopolitical risk still, mainly because um, even though the job picture is relatively steady, it is nowhere near exponential growth. So there isn't any fear of um, you know, torrid growth. And more importantly, inflationary numbers are really not coming up. The critical thing, I think, that I was watching is average wage growth. Okay. And average great wage growth still remains relatively moderate. They are finally starting to see tightening in the labor market. Mm -hmm. And once you see those average wage growth numbers begin to pick up, uh -huh. that's be the signal for the Fed to start considering interest rate hikes. Fantastic. You just mentioned geopolitical risks. Yes. We have the recent events in Iraq. Yes. How risky are they? That could be very troubling because you really don't know, um, you know how widespread that becomes mm -hmm. and sort of whether the U.S. is going to get itself involved militarily or not. I mean, the whole Middle East now is becoming a very, very uh, c serious conflagration. And because of that, um, the, oil, the shock on the oil price is starting to really you know, percolate. We talked about the idea of there is no inflation, mm -hmm. but if oil starts to you know, move back up to $4 a gallon in oil in the okay. U.S., mm -hmm. really stifles this economy big time. Oil still represents, or gasoline still represents, a big part of consumer expenses. Indeed. And at $4, $4 or higher, that whole marginal consumer spend goes away. And that's very, very serious. So we're going to monitor that very carefully. Okay, so $4 per gallon of gasoline in the U.S., that's yeah. level to watch. That's a, le that's a level you watch as, as, a, as a big yellow warning sign to the U.S. economy. Okay, great. Thank you. Euro dollar. Yes. 130 by the end of the year? I think it's quite possible because the ECB at this point is committed to this negative interest rate environment. It's going to stay that negative interest rate environment for quite a while. And I think the market is only now starting to dawn on them. Oh my God, I'm going to get punished for, for holding euros. It's actually going to cost me money to hold euros. And as that uh, idea begins to permeate through the market, and as there are other alternative um, you know, investments, especially if the U.S. economy sort of remains relatively steady yes. and U.S. yields um, percolate a little bit higher, it's going to become much more attractive to hold money in U.S. dollars than in euros. Okay. So yes, the euro, I think, has a natural downward pressure to 130 on it. All right. <clears throat> Looking out to, say, the short to medium term, two, three years out, yes. the ECB embarks on QE, you believe? Do you believe that? And B, even if it does, Will it be ultimately successful for the Eurozone to stay together and pull through or not? Well, I think the ECB is trying to do the best it can and is doing the right thing, which is continuously trying to loosen monetary conditions as much as possible within its own mandate. The QE, um, they're trying to avoid it because, because of um, institutional issues of whether they can do QE. And as you can see, we're sitting here in Spain and we're sitting at this show and it's, it's much livelier and better than it was Indeed. last year. So there's, I think, signs on the street that there is definitely much better transactionality, much better economic activity in You're Southern right. Europe, and that hopefully is going to pick up steam. We're seeing this in the PMI numbers, we're seeing this in, in other data. So if the ECB can maintain these easy conditions for three to six months and pretty much allow all of the Southern European economies to recover, that will be much better. Okay. Let's talk about currencies, currency yes. pairs. Specific currency pairs? <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. So sorry, yes. Cable. Yes, cable is, I think, one of the most uh, interesting currency pairs right now because the UK economy mm. is doing the best in the G7 universe. And okay. it's absolutely clear now, I think, to the market that the Bank of England is going to be the first major central bank to actually raise rates. All right. Because of that, you saw the pound already start to move towards the 170 level. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to very soon, it's going to break that level. And as long as the UK economy continues to perform at its level, we're probably going to see 175, perhaps even as much as 180 over the next intermediate term in pound as everybody begins to
to price in higher interest rates in the UK environment. Okay, however, Dr. Carney doesn't want a stronger sterling. Right. Does he have a choice? Um, at, at this point, he's already uh, not had much of a choice. He's already had to admit the fact that they have to raise rates. They've, they've been very, very dovish for a very long time. But because the conditions in the UK economy continue to remain so strong, the PMI numbers are at you know, 16, 17 year highs. Mm -hmm. I think the prudent you know, macro prudential view for them is to begin to, to tighten monetary policy. So they're going to do it slowly, gradually. He's by no means a hawk, okay. but just the fact that he's going to have to uh, move towards a more tightening schedule is mm -hmm. going to help the pound to go up. Magic. Yes. Horst Schlossberg, Managing Partner, BK Asset Management. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you us very, again. very much. Great to be here with you. Thank you. And that's all from all of us here at WebFG TV. So once again, thank you for your time.